entire hearing waiting to be, oh, oh Miss Hayes too. Okay. Uh, Happy to share the gold star. Thank you. Thank you. You're, you're recognized. Uh, Governor Polis, thanks uh, very much for being here uh, today. Um, I believe you're the founder of a charter school yourself, is that right? That's correct, two. Two, two charter schools. And you've been uh, a strong supporter of charters uh, in Colorado. Uh, as you know, uh, after President Biden took office, the administration almost immediately set out to target charter schools uh, with proposed rules that, as you put it, would, quote, gut the federal charter schools uh, program. And you wrote a letter to Secretary uh, Cardona in which you said you strongly oppose the Department of Education's proposed new rules. Now, I have to say, when you were asked about this earlier, you seemed to hedge a little bit, uh, saying that, well, different states have different authorizing laws. Uh, but there was no hedging in this letter. Uh, you uh, celebrated the national impact of charter schools. You wrote, around the country, public charter schools are making a difference in students' lives. During the 2020-2021 school year, nearly 240,000 new students enrolled in charter schools across the country. You also wrote in this letter, it is confounding and deeply disturbing that the Department of Education would even want to consider making the opening of high quality charter schools considerably more difficult than ever before. Our students need more public school options and high quality charter schools play a critical role in providing that access. So I don't want to put you in a tough spot. I'm coming at this from someone who is very interested in bipartisan education reform. I'm a former high school teacher myself, very interested in working on a bipartisan basis to expand educational opportunity, to expand high quality public school options, to close achievement gaps. Uh, and I have found some uh, partners on the other side of the aisle. I hope to have the chance to collaborate with you as well. Uh, but I have to say, it's been few and far between. With many in your party, it's like running into a brick wall. The only interest they have in charters is how to uh, harass them, uh, how to target them, how to get rid of them. Uh, in my state, California, the governor and supermajority have been condemned time and time again by civil rights groups for their rel relentless attacks on charter schools. So you're the chosen witness here of the minority at today's hearing. I just wanted to get your help in understanding. Why do you think so many elected officials in your party are hostile to charter schools? Well, I don't think that, uh, I don't see charter schools as a partisan issue. In our state, about 15.2% of kids who go to public school go to attend a public charter school. I founded a charter school for new immigrants uh, and English language learners and one for kids who were uh, experiencing insecurity in housing. Um, and again, I, I was uh, pleased that the final rule, again, while I didn't think the rule was necessary for the Department of Education, it did incorporate uh, many of the changes that I suggested, that others suggested uh, involved with charter schools. This is around a funding stream that specifically supports new charter schools, and it's very important. I uh, helped write some of the legislation when I was here around that piece of the Every Student Succeeds Act. Uh, and it's really important to support innovation. I think it's a high return investment. It's a small dollar amount, high return. Uh, it's also important to note that not every idea is gonna work out, and, and that's okay. Just as every charter school doesn't work out, every new district initiative doesn't work out. Uh, but if you're not trying to do something different, uh, then you're doing things the same I'm way. Sorry, Governor, my, working, time, my, my time is limited, so I just want to get back to the question, sure. because it has become a partisan issue. It was this administration that almost immediately went after charter schools. And as you well know, uh, it's the, the opposition to charter schools uh, largely comes from uh, the other side of the dais. We've heard some comments today. So I want to get your thoughts on this. Why has it become a partisan issue? Because I agree with you, it shouldn't be. Well, again, I, I, uh, President uh, Obama was uh, very supportive of uh, high quality charter schools. I have every reason to believe the Biden administration is also supportive of high quality charter schools that improve equity and access. Uh, I think what they're pointing out, and again, I don't always agree with uh, everything that uh, they've said, is they're, even, they're more concerned about the equity and access piece. And I think it is complicated how charter schools affect equity and access. Depends on the particular charter school, depends on, 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 on the attendance, depends on the recruitment. Uh, uh, and yes, some states and some school districts have better or worse authorizing laws than others. We're proud of our authorizing laws in Colorado, and we hope to improve them even more. 
Do you have any other theories as to why it is that in some states we have overwhelming opposition to charters from one side of the aisle? Uh, well, there's certainly states that have worse uh, charter authorizing laws. And so frankly, they've had some negative experiences with charters that we haven't seen in Colorado. Uh, in Colorado, uh, we've seen them as a very constructive, innovative part of public education. Uh, and there's enormous demand uh, for uh, d differentiated programs. And by the way, districts have learned from practices in charter schools. And districts have improved and offered new programming in district schools as well. Well, thank you. I appreciate your commitment to doing the right thing for students, and I uh, would encourage you to have uh, conversations with uh, some who are uh, less willing to take that same approach.